Daily hair care sounds simple, but a lot of my clients are still making mistakes that are causing damage. So today I'm going to show you some really easy ways to take better care of your hair. Stop being afraid of heat. In my salon, we use heat on every single client. That's usually what happens when you go to a salon. And guess what? Your hair never looks better. There's so many people out there that are like, oh, I need to take a break from heat. I heard it's bad. And yes, if you're one of those daily flat ironers, I see you, you do need to take a break from heat. But everyone else, no, you don't. You just need to learn how to use heat correctly. When you were first learning to do makeup and you messed up, you weren't like, I'm never doing this again. I'm gonna throw it all away. Makeup is bad. You just needed someone to show you how to use it correctly. And then you figured it out, except for wings. Wings are really hard. At least that's what my clients say. And bringing this back to heat styling, there are two rules that make heat completely safe. Number one, always use a heat protectant. And number two, give your hair three days rest before you put heat on it again. If you're anything like my clients, you probably get a little bit confused with heat protection, but it's actually really simple. There are only two types of heat. Heat from a blow dryer or blow dry brush, and then heat from an iron. Blow drying is around 170 degrees. All you're gonna do is use a blow dry cream with built-in heat protection. All the good ones already have this heat protection built into them. These are my two favorite blow dry creams, Red Ken Big Blowout and Red Ken Frizz Dismiss Rebel Tame. If you have fine or medium hair and want volume, Big Blowout is going to be amazing for you. Or if you have coarse hair and you really struggle with frizz and you want that nice, sleek, smooth look, Rebel Tame is gonna be your best option. And then if you use an iron, that's much hotter, so you're gonna need a thermal heat protectant. This is what I recommend to all my clients, Thermal Spray 22. It even has extra hold and shine in it. It's amazing, easy, no heat damage. See you later, off to the races with better hair. Overnight protection. Your hair cannot be trusted to take care of itself while you're sleeping. Let's be honest, it doesn't even take care of itself when you're awake. So if you let your hair do its own thing, all night, you're gonna wake up with huge problems and this is where a bunch of damage potentially comes from. You're gonna look up the next morning while you're brushing your teeth and be like, what in the heck am I looking at? And what am I gonna do with this thing? Do I wet it? Do I style it? Do I iron it? They're all bad options. And on top of that, you were so distracted that you totally forgot to use your dental floss. Let me show you a different version of this story that's a million times better. What you really want to do is make sure that you're never even in that position in the first place. If you just took care of your hair overnight, you would never forget to floss again. Here's how you can do that. Your first option is to tie your hair up in a loose bun. This one's super easy, but you have to remember the bun should be loose. And actually don't use one of these hair ties at all. These are really outdated and God help you if you're still using one of those with the metal on it. Those rip out so much hair, they should be illegal. The health department should literally be going around taking them off all the shelves. We have much better options to work with today, starting with the Invisibobble. These guys look like an old phone cord. The design minimizes contact with your hair so it doesn't leave this big crease or crimp mark and you can pull it out of your hair pretty easily but you still wanna be careful. The only thing with these guys is you can't double them over a whole bunch of times or else they're gonna be so tight on your hair, you'll still get a crease. So keep them loose. My salon co-founder Leslie has a day job where she has to go into surgery and they need something to tie their hair back. One day, one of the doctors that she worked with said, hey, how come you're always able to put your hair back and you never get a crease in it? What's your secret? So Leslie says, oh, I use these things. They're called an Invisibobble. It's so easy. Why don't you try this in our next surgery and see how you like it? An hour later, they get out of the surgery and the doctor gives her the Invisibobble back and she says, I don't get it, I still have a crease. The doctor had doubled it over so many times, it still creased her hair. This is not a boa constrictor and it does not need to have a death grip on your hair. It can totally be loose, especially if you're asleep. Your next option is a scrunchie and these things were apparently so good, we just couldn't leave them back in the 80s where they belong. And that is really saying something because things from the 80s have not aged very well, except me and Leslie. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the way these look, but a lot of people are. That's totally fine. You don't have to agree with me. These work really, really well. We also have a weapon of last resort here, and if you're a really active sleeper like I am, you're constantly tossing and turning and that type of thing, just use a silk bonnet. Honestly, I recommend these to a lot of people now because it's so easy and it works for everyone. You'd have to really try to mess this up. 
The only thing is that some people complain these don't look super sexy, but I don't know what they're talking about. I think they look great, and if you're that worried, put them on after you turn the lights out. Always match products to hair type. Have you ever had a friend tell you that she loves a hair product and that you absolutely have to try it? I'm not talking about Monet here. So you go out, you buy it and try it, and then you hate it and you have absolutely no idea why she would ever recommend it to you. That's because the two of you have totally different hair types or maybe she just has really bad taste in hair products. When it comes to hair products, it's more complicated than this is a good product and this is a bad product. There are good products for your hair type and bad products for your hair type. And when you walk in to something like an Ulta or a Sephora, it is impossible to tell if a product is a good match for your hair type. They'll let you test makeup to see if it's good for you, but there's no easy way to test hair products to see if they're good for you. And I've dedicated my entire life to testing and understanding hair products, and even I'm overwhelmed by how many they have in a store. The only way to know how a product actually works is to test it out on all the different hair types and see how it performs but ain't nobody got the time for that. Except for me. I have time for that because I have a salon, I have a bunch of stylists that can help me out with this type of thing, and I absolutely love doing it. That's where all my knowledge comes from. I've put all that knowledge into something that I call my recommended product list. It's basically a running list of all my favorite products that I've tested for each hair type. You can check it out in the description. It even has a hair type quiz to help you out. For example, one of the shampoos on my recommended product list, it was one of my favorites, Boston Pulp Riot, it got discontinued. So we had to find a new product and it took us weeks to find a replacement. So I went to 10 of my neighbors and had them try one shampoo on the right side, and another shampoo on the left side to see which one they liked more. Every day we went over to their house to look at their hair and see which side was holding out better. And it turned out that IGK Extra Love was the winner. That's the type of thought that we put behind this stuff. We are not messing around. If you have fine or medium hair and you like to air dry, this is your dude, and now it's on the recommended product list. And quickly, before I move on, hair type is not 2A, 3B, straight, wavy, curly, no. That's your hair pattern, and it's great for discussing the hair shape or curl pattern, but using that to buy products is like going to Tire Kingdom and saying, I need tires for a red car. Tires for a red car, please, I have a red car. That's not how you do it. Hair type describes how your hair responds to products and how heavy or light your product formulations need to be to get the most out of your hair. Don't cheap out on the basics. These are the basic building blocks of healthy hair. And if you don't get these right, you're gonna have problems. If you try to go cheap on shampoo and conditioner, it's gonna cost you later, I promise you. And what I mean by that is you're gonna be like, oh, I need a product for this problem that I have, and then I need to go buy another product for another problem that I have. And the next thing you know, you're buying all these one-off products for the hair problems that you have, and none of them work. You're gonna end up frustrated and be like, hair makes no sense, nothing works, I quit. But then you're stuck with this huge product graveyard with all these things that you never use anymore because they didn't work. And if you added up the cost of all those extra products that didn't work, it actually would have been way cheaper to just get high quality shampoo and conditioner in the first place and you'd have way better hair. Let's please make sure that doesn't happen to you because that ruins hair for a lot of people. I don't want you to be one of them. So in the world of hair, there are two different categories. There are products that have already proven to work. These are categories that have been around literally for decades. You have shampoo, conditioner, leave-in conditioner, hair oil, heat protectants, stuff like that. But there's another shady side of hair where they're trying to push new products that sound really nice, but don't actually work. And those are your things like scalp scrubs, hair growth shampoos, and strengthening products. What I would really suggest that you do is stay on the proven product side. All these products work, it's not even up for debate. There's only three reasons that these proven products wouldn't give you amazing results, and this happens to a lot of people. Number one is because they just go way too cheap. They try to go bargain basement, and you're not getting a deal. It doesn't do what it says it's gonna do. Number two can be if you haven't found a good match for your hair type. It has to match your hair type. Or option number three is that you don't know how to use it, and a lot of products are much harder to use than you think. My recommended product list will solve the first two of those problems, so those are gone, see you later. But the third problem is a little bit trickier. So literally anyone who buys hair products, we give a little set of these little instructions because a lot of people are using the products wrong and they have absolutely no idea. 
And yes, I know you're not a dummy, but you learned how to use hair products a long time ago and then you never updated those techniques and things have changed a lot. You're spending money to get products and you're not even getting 10% of the benefit that you should be getting out of them. And because of that, you're going over to the shady side and wasting your money looking for a quick fix when all that you really ever needed to do was learn how to use your products correctly. The best way I can explain this to you is that literally 90% of people do not know how to use shampoo. Shampoo is the most basic hair product. Most people aren't using it right. Shampooing the right way. Remember those 10 neighbors I told you about that help us test shampoos? When we started, we printed out an instruction sheet for them and exactly how to wash their hair with the shampoo. And the vast majority of them were like, oh my gosh, I had no idea I was supposed to be doing this. So let me show you a couple of pointers that I showed them. First, oil does not rinse out. If you ever got your hands really, really greasy in something, you know that it takes two washes to get that like slippery texture off of your hands. And it's the same with hair, so two washes. The first wash is to get a majority of the dirt, oil, and buildup that's off your hair, but no matter what, there's still going to be some on there. And the second wash is where you come in and get everything fully clean. And if you don't get your hair fully clean and you leave some oil in there, it's like that saying, one bad apple spoils the entire bunch. Your hair is gonna get gross really quickly. And that's bad because you really wanna wait as long as you can before you wash your hair again. And also when you apply your shampoo, you only wanna apply it to your scalp because the oil is on your scalp. If you put shampoo on the top of your hair and tie and swirl it around from the top, you are never going to get it all the way down to your scalp where all the oil is hiding. That's why you wanna do your best to split your hair apart and really press the shampoo all the way down onto your scalp so you get all the oil because if you don't get it all, you're gonna be one of those people like, ooh, I can never go days without washing my hair. The only way you can go days between washes is if you get it all the way clean. And one last quick tip before we move on, shampoo does not go on your mids and ends. Oil is only produced by your scalp. Your hair is dead. It doesn't produce any oil, so you should not have any oil on your mids and ends at all. So if you take shampoo and put it on your mids and ends when there's no excess oil, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take the healthy oil out of your hair and dry the heck out of it. You don't wanna do that. Shampoo only goes on your roots and scalp. And for the people out there like, I've been using Pantene on my mids and ends forever and I've never had a problem. You actually do have a problem. The only reason you've been able to use it on your mids and ends, because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't actually remove oil or get your hair clean. It's not the way you want to do it. Professional shampoos and drugstore shampoos are two totally different products. Finding your shampoo soulmate, a shampoo that's a perfect match for your hair type and keeps your hair clean for days at a time will change your life and it's the first step on your healthy hair journey. Use less products. It might sound weird having someone who makes a living from hair tell you not to buy so many products, but really it's a lot better for your hair. And it's not just that I want you to buy less, it's just an important that you actually use less. You do not want to be loading your hair up with all this product. Every product that you put into your hair after you get out of the shower reduces the amount of time that you can go before you have to wash. If you're like most of my clients, you should probably take whatever amount of products that you're using right now and then cut it in half and you'll get the same results. When you have all this heavy product on your hair, it's like caking on foundation after you've already got it perfect. You just don't need to. It makes your hair feel weighed down and heavy, and you're like, I'm gonna have to wash this. There's no way to go a long time between washes. But no, you only have to wash it that often because you're putting so much extra product in your hair in the first place, and you don't need it. There's another whole world of hair out there where your hair will stay fresh for days at a time and looking good, without you even trying. And tying this all back together, when you find your shampoo soulmate, it'll fully cleanse all the buildup in your hair that your previous shampoo wasn't able to remove, and your hair stays fresh and bouncy because you use products that were actually a perfect match for your hair type, which means it's not weighed down. And now you're able to use a lot less product overall because you're focusing on the basics instead of getting all these different products. And guess what? All of a sudden, your hair looks great because you finally figured out how to do everything right. Taking care of your hair is much easier. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. I know this can be a little bit overwhelming. An easy way to start, 
check out my recommended product list in the description. It'll walk you through everything and help you figure out your hair type. Have a good one.